I was going people from the tube and uh, from the world. <laughs> In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to find a crack on a cast iron head. And this this probably well this certainly applies for any other cast iron object. So basically, how to find a crack on cast iron. Uh, using only uh, a sander or a die grinder with a stone on it, using actually using a drill, and that's it. No other special tools, nothing. So normally, what most people would do is it has to take a cat, uh, this this cylinder head, take it to a special shop, and then they'd use something called magnaflux or something like that, and some special dye, and special liquid, and uh, they'll take you your special money too. In this video I'll be showing you guys how to do away with all of that and it works really well and basically I just use first of all you have to clean everything up so it's nice and shiny As you can see it wasn't like that it was actually like this all right yeah I gotta remember to buy paint thinner <laughs> I know I know it's missing an end there but what a, whatever I don't care about the English language language only serves a purpose to communicate that communicates thinner regardless if it's got one end or two so a very straight to the point objective guy so, um, so as I was saying uh, and I just use the stone to grind off a little bit like that slice uh, not a big mean grinder like this that probably won't work what happens is when I use a fine stone like that this is from eBay as well by the way I just bought a big box like that it creates a fine powder and then you blow on it and it actually goes into cracks so I'll zoom in you can see it from all the way over here but I'll show you, and you don't want to touch it. I'll, I'll show you what happens if you touch it. And I just blow on it, and you can see it. And then afterwards, I can use like a marker, like a, or a crayon, to mark that off. But I'm just going to zoom in there so you guys can see. Yeah, there's some pretty mean cracks here. All the way down there, it comes out here. This one, the same thing. There it is. And there. So just now especially here, you can see the size of the crack. Now, if I put my hand on it, you see it'll sort of. See how it it gets smaller? Now it's barely visible. So you want to leave it on there. And I don't know if I don't know what sort of if the uh, little pieces of steel get ionized or magnetized, something like that. But as you can see, they stick like a magnet. See there, they're actually quite high. Let's see if it'll zoom in there. See that? It's also surprising how this this old phone. The camera is a million times better close up than the stupid Canyon Rebel i5 camera that I use for most videos. Downside is the phone I don't have a stand for it, so. So simple as that. I just follow that up with the crayon and then I'm gonna grind it. You gotta make a V shape and then I'm gonna weld it. So somebody definitely overheated this engine in the past. When I got the car, it was already like that. And uh, it's one of those things. If this was an aluminum head, it would have just warped. Or just bust all the uh, cylinders or whatever. I like the cast iron. Race engines are cast iron. Diesel engines. Aluminum, as soon as you get a gasket problem, it ruins the whole engine. Everything gets warped. Cast iron does not warp. 
it'll crack like this under extreme conditions which somebody really really abused the hell out of this car and it'll leak coolant that's it you still have a fine engine you just keep putting coolant in if that's the case but if it's aluminum and it's warped and coolant starts getting in everywhere you lose compression everything goes to hell the whole engine gets warped everything then it warps the uh, connecting rods and everything 